Did you know that in the time it takes me to say this sentence, the web will have grown by around 5,000 pages? Have you ever wondered how you can send secret messages over the internet when millions of computers can listen in? Join me as I crawl through the internet and start untangling the web. And welcome to Untangling the Web. A quarter of the world's population is already using the internet for email, for downloading music and videos, and of course, for the World Wide Web. All this is made possible by some of the most extraordinary results in computer science. For example, later in this lecture, we'll see how two people who've never communicated with each other before can exchange secret messages, even though all of their communications are public. But how does it all work? Well, to help us find out, Andy has left a secret message for us somewhere on the web. He hasn't said where it is, but he has given me a web address. And apparently, if we follow the instructions, we should be able to find the secret message. So let's see what the first instruction is. And he's asking a question. What year was the first Bond film made? Now, adults in the audience will remember what it used to be like when we wanted to find out some information. We'd have to visit a library. And then we'd have to trawl through dozens of books and journals, a process that hasn't changed in centuries. And of course, all of this could, well, take a very long time. And finally, we'd find the information we were looking for. Well, today, of course, is much easier. We simply use a search engine. So let's go to a search engine. And I'll type in first Bond film. And it's brought up some links, so let's go to the first link. And it's telling me that the first Bond film was made in 1962, and it was Dr. No. Now, something very remarkable just happened. The web is huge, and it's growing at an extraordinary rate. If every new web page were represented by a little piece of glitter like this, then this is how fast the web is growing. That's 500 pages a second. Imagine, imagine if I'd written my name on one of these pieces of glitter. How long would it take you to find it? And that's just 5,000 pages. There are roughly 15 billion pages on the web. That's three pages for every person on the planet. How does a search engine manage to sort through this vast mountain of information and find what we need in a fraction of a second? Well, to find out, we can have a look at this very simplified model of the web. It has just four pages, yellow, red, blue, and green. And you'll notice there are links between the pages. So if we click on the word avocados here, for instance, on the yellow page, then it takes us across to the green page. It's these links between the pages which allow us to search the web very efficiently. Now, have you ever wondered how a search engine decides which page to put at the top of the list? Well, it uses lots of different kinds of information. But let's just have a look at two of the most useful things. The first of these is called PageRank. And it tells us how important a web page it is. And it makes use of these links. We can see how it works by looking at this water model. So each of these colored tubes corresponds to one of these web pages. And the pipes between the tubes correspond to the links. So we have a link from the yellow page here to the green page. And over here, we have a tube from the yellow page going across to the green page. Now, we started out with the same amount of water in each of those tanks. So I'm going to go across here and switch on the pumps. And it's going to pump water from one page to another following those links. Now, in a moment, when the water levels settle down, the height of the water in each tube will tell us how important that web page is. And already, we can begin to see that the yellow page and the red page are not very important pages. The water is quite low. The reason is that these pages just have one incoming link. If 
you look across at the green page, we'll see that it's much more important. And that's because it has two incoming links. The blue page, however, is also important. Although it has only one incoming link, that link is coming from another page which itself is important. Now, of course, let's make a gurgling noise. <laughs> Not me. On the real web, of course, the computer has to solve this problem for millions of interconnected web pages at the same time. So that's our first example of something which a search engine uses. Our second example also makes use of these links between pages. Let's suppose we're looking for information about avocados. Well, if we click on this green link here, which is on the yellow page, we click on this link that says avocados, it takes us through to the green page. The fact that this says avocados can tell the search engine that the page which it points to is probably about the topic avocados. And we call this anchor text. So search engines combine information such as page rank and anchor text to decide on which page to put at the top of the list. OK, let's see if we can get to Andy's secret video then. And we've already found out that the first James Bond film was Dr. No, and that was in 1962. So if we put uh, 1962 into that box, and it says, congratulations, a secure connection has been established. OK, obviously Andy doesn't want just anybody to be able to view that video. Now, I know this is a secure connection, because if we look at the web page, we see that the address begins HTTPS. That little S means secure. And also, if we look across here, we see a little yellow padlock symbol, and that again confirms that this is a secure web link. Now, secure links are important if you want to send private information, for example, your name and address, or your credit card information across the internet, so that nobody else can understand it and copy it. But how are secure links such as this able to keep our information secret? Well, we'll find out after the break. <laughs> 